Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we are going to once again attempt to send a probe on a flyby of the moon and we'll see how that works out. Of course it's not entirely in my hands uh, but I did get one suggestion that should be put into effect immediately um, and that is to unlock these two first technologies uh, in order to get the upgrade points which makes sense. So, and besides, we probably should get uh, eventually the aerodynamic upgrades here. The procedural control surfaces for a space plane uh, will help in certain circumstances. So, uh, even if we don't make space planes. But, uh, yeah, we got those two. These cost substantially more, so we're not getting those just yet. And uh, we'll leave those at the bottom of the queue list for the technologies because we're not in a rush to get them. Uh, but we do have the upgrade points, so let's take a look at that. I, I feel like because, you know, we've got the, this uh, window, we, uh, we're pressed for time as far as sending the mission on the lunar flyby. And really, we don't need any new technology to do that. Uh, I mean, it might help with the reliability of the AJ-10. We've already just upgraded the AJ-10 to the AJ-1042. Uh, we'll hope that that's more reliable than the AJ-1037. But, yeah, I mean, the most important thing is to get as many chances in as possible. So I'm going to just upgrade the build speed. And hopefully that'll be the best thing to do. Uh, I did put one of our upgrade, uh, engine upgrades to, into effect in a Lunar Atlas 3. So a sequel to the Lunar Atlas 2 currently being built. And the Lunar Atlas 2... Uh, has the upgraded AJ-10s, but what it doesn't have is upgraded booster engines, the LR-89. So at a cost of 12,500, I got this configuration, LR-89 NA-3, and the difference is that it gives a few uh, extra ISP points, uh, a few extra seconds of ISP, same rated burn time, but it has a lot more thrust. It has, um, I think, about 10% more thrust, a little bit more than 10% more thrust, maybe 15 even. Uh, so the, the result of that is that we can fully fuel this tank, very important. I also rebalanced the fuel so that uh, down here, the LR-105 has this sort of round bottom part. Instead of just having kerosene in there, I just put kerosene and liquid oxygen so that uh, we make sure that the fuel is balanced. And uh, now we have a thrust weight ratio of 1.28 off the ground, which will help. And uh, yeah, uh, as a result, the Lunar Atlas 3, I'm thinking, can get rid of one of the AJ-10 stages, right? We had two AJ-10 stages in a row, this one and then another one here. I've decided to dump the one here and just stick to this one. And I think the Atlas should be able to lift this mass into orbit, right? I mean, it's less than one ton. It seems reasonable to figure that that is possible. I'm almost tempted, really, to make this stage out of one kilonewton thrusters because they're not going to fail. I mean, uh, I think they don't have a uh, test flight configuration on them or a limited burn time. So, but the downside is, of course, their uh, efficiency is not so good. Now, what we have here is, thanks to the upgraded, um, what you got, VAB, we put the extra two upgrade points into the VAB. The build time is shorter. The rollout cost seems more. And I think we had taken a look on a live stream at the equation that goes into the rollout cost. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, it seems highly dependent on the launch pad and, and build points, but not as dependent on other factors. But, um, yeah. Well, anyway, it is what it is. So it's going to take a lot to roll this out, but, you know, we've got that contract to fulfill. And what are you going to do? So I'm going to build one of these. And let me try and configure this with just one kilonewton thrusters and see what happens. I don't know if that's going to be feasible or not. Well, at a mass of one ton, we've got 3,729 meters per second in all of this. I've reconfigured these thrusters to be hydrazine thrusters. And of course, these are hydrazine as well. They say nominal. 
and we indeed have this a high pressure tank and of course the avionics is here this has its own avionics and this was sized for that and yeah well that's enough to get to the moon and atlas should be able to lift a ton one would hope so this seems legit i think and yeah that is nice uh, it's a little bit more expensive and that's because you know each of these one kilonewton thrusters we got three of them down there now uh is 80 oh sorry 60 and the aj10 well i mean it's only 150 so shouldn't have been that much more anyway i made it an eight minute stage because i figured that's about as much as i wanted to get away with i think this is a good idea. I'm not sure, but it seems promising. So let's just make sure we've got staging right. Is the AJ-10 completely obsolete? We're about to find out. Now, the staging is a little bit weird because this is actually just another fairing, but we had to have something to transition between this diameter and that. And this is the prefab fairing. That's why it's bigger on this end than it ought to be because it's also used for the Aldebaran rocket. Okay, well that should cover all the salient stuff. We'll give this a go too. Uh, so this is Lunar Atlas 4. I feel a lot better about just having the one kill Newton thrusters and at this point I suppose you guys would feel a lot better about that too than having another AJ-10 engine. Um, we might, uh, we'll actually move that up. And we're going to rush build, of course. Rush building is a trivial cost compared to the rollout cost, anyway. They're not gonna be uh, they're not all gonna be done in time, though. But there is another option if we can uh, get a lunar impactor in. That would cover it. So, in a pinch, if the next one fails or succeeds, we'll probably pick up the Lunar Impactor mission and aim for that instead. Okay, well, we're gonna have to top off the fuels because otherwise there's gonna be boil off. So, fuel pump enabled, and we have to time warp quite a bit so that the relative inclination gets down to zero. At this point, we have 59 days left for the contract, and we'll get at least one mission built by then. Throttle up, SAS on. Okay, here we go. Ignition. All three have ignited. And launch. Unfortunately, the upgrade on the LR-105 engine was like more than 20,000 funds. Otherwise, I would have gotten that as well. It's got like eight extra vacuum ISP seconds, which would be a good thing. And I think a little bit more thrust as well, of course. But too costly at this point. We wouldn't be able to afford the rollout costs on these rockets. At some point. Okay, we are in overburn territory on these engines. Alright, separation. This is as much overburning as I want to do on those. Let's hope the trusty LR-105 is still trusty. Okay, we're pitching down because while I was talking I wasn't paying enough attention and... Let's not talk about the inclination. <laughs> okay, uh, separation. RCS on. I think we can just ignite. Um, yeah, let's see if this AJ-10 works. Ignition. It does. Burning set. Can we do a continuous burn? No. No. So we're going to have to dump some of the fuel from here. And that's why I got rid of this stage in the other iterations. The Lunar Atlas 3 and 4. We ended up, uh, we we're gonna end up dumping a thousand meters per second. It's hardly worth it. But this is now the AJ-10-42. 
And we don't have full data units on it yet, but 37 minutes mean time before failure. Considering it's got a two minute burn time, well, statistics are weird, so. Okay, uh, 304 by 166. We'll keep the stage to do our orientation before starting the next burn. Yeah, okay, maybe we should start now while we have connection. I think we're gonna lose it otherwise. And we want to burn out this stage. If we have to go around in order to do the one kill newton thruster stage, that's fine. No problems there. Okay, separation. RCS forward. Verify settled. Ignition. We have an ignition. Okay, we had a good burn on that. We'll hold off on the hydrazine there. And I definitely don't want to decouple. I think it'll just... I don't know how to extend the uh, solar panels on this right now without decoupling. Will it get solar power once we were in daylight? I thought that we had tested that and it worked. Um, yeah, well, as long as we pointed directly at the sun, apparently. So, uh, we're running out of HDP here. Well, then again, we don't really need it. We're going to be dumping the stage soon enough. So I'm going to actually come around and then do the rest of the burn. Unless... Well, we could try it here. I mean, that looks pretty good. Our inclination is a bit iffy, but... All right. Whoa, not what I wanted to focus on. Thank you. First thruster burn. We may have a few more. Um, our Delta V didn't seem as much as I thought it would be. The one... K okay, well, we've got a bit of a problem. There's something wrong with how it's reading the Delta V here. Well, that ruins everything, doesn't it? Well, now we have a um, high-level satellite. We, I guess it would work as a relay. All right, have we done it from this level? Yeah, uh, no, we have not. So let's transmit that data. Ooh, nine science for cosmic ray science. It might have, well, no, it wouldn't have been the timing because... We were still basically prograde, and I know I was a little bit off from prograde, but not much. Not enough to have made that difference. Mass spectrometry and uh, micrometeorite detection. Well, we got a bunch of science. And we've got a permanent satellite in a really high orbit. But we didn't get a moon mission. So as you can see here, I mean, it says those two stages combined at 3,800 meters per second, which should definitely have been enough to get us over to the moon. I mean, that takes 3,200 max. But it's because we haven't routed this properly. It's only 3,089. Uh, see? That changes stuff. That's why the camera changed as well. Okay, well, we need to bring the other rockets in to double-check them. Well, this Lunar Atlas 4 was overly optimistic. Now, we can't increase the size of this. I would love to increase utilization there, but that only takes up to 0.1 tons of control. So we're going to have... Eventually, what I wanted to do with this was for this to actually capture around the moon. We could pump it up a little bit to that, but the rest is going to have to be taken up by this stage. But And the margins are really tight now. Now it doesn't look so good with the one kill newton thrusters, does it? We could do a procedural probe core, but that's 30,000 funds. So I've given it an 11 minute burn time. And, you know, 1.366 tons, it's tough to say. I think I want to do the other mission, the Lunar Atlas 3 instead, with the single AJ-10. Hopefully the new AJ-10s, the AJ-10... 42s are an okay replacement. I wonder if the decoupling force on the Explorer 6 would be enough to push the other mission to the moon or not. I doubt it, but we should probably at least check that. What happens when I tell it to decouple? 
Oh, interesting. After I did my edits uh, to both rockets, now I can do more rush building. And so that's an interesting fact. Well, why not? Okay, pour it on. And let's see. Can we get this? Seems like we can get both done within the time we have. But Lunar Atlas 4, I have very little faith in now. I don't think we have enough Delta V there. But uh, Lunar Atlas 3 is now our prime target. And that all depend on the engines working, of course. Okay, we're currently 3.66 degrees off, but I can correct that during launch. Unfortunately, it's not possible. Well, it's not easy to do a direct transfer to the moon like this, so we're going to have to make orbit first. Uh, of course, I think we've configured this rocket so that it would make orbit first, so that's not a problem. Uh, yeah, let's just go. Throttle up. SAS on. And... Ignition. And launch. Now we have a bit more thrust to weight ratio. Okay, past the speed of sound. Right on target, as it so happens. Oh, we've got, uh, what have we got here? Oh, loss of specific impulse on one of the engines. That's not good. Also loss of thrust, but still. I think I'm gonna dump the booster engines... now. So we'll have to see. I'm not getting a burn time reading on this stage right now. Okay, I'm going to separate the fairings sooner rather than later while we're on this stage just so that we get as much margin as possible. Okay, fairing set. And now we can see our delta V, which is good, and the all-important burn time. We really need this stage to get us to orbit. I'm actually not going to separate these. But... Ah, yeah, it removes my Delta V reading, so I've got to leave them there. Okay, we are now flat. And it looks like we have enough Delta V, but it's going to be tight and everything. Shut down 220 by 199.5. All right, uh, we let the inclination go a little bit at the end there, but fine. Let's get rid of all those cores that are draining our power. RCS on and set. Okay, uh, we appear to be recharging. SAS is on. Okay, I'm just gonna time warp because it's constantly firing those thrusters. It seems to be all right, and we can confirm that Atlas does bring 1.2 tons to orbit. And do normal staging. And the engine failed. Well, well, yeah, that can happen. And AJ1042, not immune to failure. Why do we have only 1,500 data units? We had like 5,000 data units before on the other engines. I think they started out at 5,000. They didn't accumulate 5,000 on flight. Why does this only have 1,500? And why does it, well, I guess after it failed, the mean seconds before, mean time before failure will go down, but I mean, that had 32 minutes. The, uh, the mean time before failure shouldn't go down just because it actually has failed, right? I don't know. I feel like it's cheating me. Well, we're in this orbit now. Uh, I suppose we can lift it to a higher orbit just so that it can help facilitate communications a little bit better, huh? Well, not right now. No, it's a very vigorous decoupling, actually. Okay, I mean, I don't know what kind of orbit that is, but it's a higher orbit so that it can help with communications a little bit better than if it was in a tight orbit. Now, we've got all these lines. Let's 
eliminate some of those. But just the orbit lines are quite quite enough. So let me just quickly go to this Lunar Atlas 2 probe and see if when we if we decouple that periapsis, will it boost our orbit much? Everything's worth a try, right? Um, it de does depend on whether we're going to be pointed the right way, though. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any control. I mean, right now we're pointed at prograde, but that doesn't bode well for when we reach periapsis, does it? No, we're going to be pointed retrograde. Well, I don't want to do that to this poor probe, so. Okay, that's fine. I just want to see... All right, we've got 7,815 meters per second, and we decouple. Um, that's about two meters per second. Well, I activated through staging, and the panel still didn't deploy. I remember this one had one wonky panel. Explorer 6, did, uh, sorry, not Explorer. I kept see, keep saying Explorer, because it looks like an Explorer 6, but it isn't. Uh, no, Explorer 6 was the one with the wonky panel, wasn't it? Or was it Pioneer 5? Don't tell me this one, they just couldn't deploy the panels. I don't know why there's no panel deployment. I mean, at least the panels are working in this direction, though. I mean, if we turn, they're not going to work. Okay, well, at this point, before our reputation takes too much of a hit... I'm going to pick up the Lunar Impactor and even Lunar Orbiter contracts, I think. Lunar Orbiter, how tight does it have to be? Well, 5,000 kilometers isn't too bad. Maybe I'll leave... well... Okay, so how much of a reputation hit are we going to take? Minus 94 points. Uh, it's sort of a logarithmic scale, so I don't know exactly where that puts us. It doesn't seem like it's going to totally kill our program, though. So maybe I can just take the Lunar Impactor one and they'll still offer the Lunar Orbiter. I'm just afraid of not getting the Lunar Orbiter one. Can we do these other satellites? Uh, sure, but I mean, I'm focused on this because once we get the upgrades that, you know, the money would provide. And we've already paid a lot up front to uh, build rockets capable of these missions. Then it'll be quicker to do these other ones. Um, we can build the rockets faster and everything. Now we have a new influx of funds, but we have to keep in mind that they got to take away 225,000 of those funds soon. So we can't just spend them. Well, with this rocket, it's going to be a bit tight, but I think I'm going to try and put more fuel in here. I mean, we could do the cheaty thing and have like half a non-high pressure tank and the rest be a high pressure tank, but... I don't want to do that. Um, so we're up to 12 minutes, basically. And that gives us 3,253 meters per second. Can the Atlas rocket lift uh, the whole 1.466 tons? We'll have to see. I, I just realized something. While we can roll it out in time, 8 days and 21 hours, 10 days there, we're not going to actually reach the moon in time. So uh, with this, we're basically going to have to try for the impactor contract. We have no choice. We're going to fail this uh, lunar flyby contract either way. We're going to get the mission control upgrade in 41 days. And that means we'll be able to plot our courses. But, you know, actually, even without that, I could have gotten to the moon just fine if our engines all worked out and the delta v reading had been correct you know all right throttle up sas is on ignition got three good engines and launch so we are still collecting data units on the lre9s And the LR-43 slash LR-105. Mean time before failure is pretty good though. Okay, getting ready for booster separation.
a magical time in any Atlas flight. I thought 2 minutes and 20 seconds worked pretty well for us, but I'm going to here. Because that's closer to a thrust weight ratio of 1, so I just like that better. Don't know if that was the right choice, holding on to them for more, uh, four more seconds. Those extra seconds count for a whole lot, though. Don't be fooled, that's a whole lot of extra, uh, a whole lot of less time on this engine if you hold on to them. Okay, fairing set. Okay, we are about to make orbit. And shut down. 226 by 203. Good times. Alright, set. And we can ignite all the engines, that's fine. Excellent. All right. Reads two, uh, 3,253 meters per second. That's pretty tight. It's doable, but it's pretty tight. We've got a 0.4 degree inclination. If if, if I had uh, flight planning right now, it'd be trivial, of course. Uh, just out of curiosity, I, I, I want to see if Mechchev actually can make a plot when we don't have flight planning. We're getting it. It's, it's coming up. It's, it's like in 41 days only. So, but let me see. I, w I wanted to check this out. Mm, home and transfer to target, create node. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I can. All right, well, we're screwed now because I've got the plot here and I'm going to use it. <laughs> oh, mech jeb. But I would have burned there in the first place anyway. Totally would have. We also have a bigger problem in that it's not like we can do this burn instantaneously. We've got a 12 minute stage here and a 1 minute stage there. So, yeah, it's not going to be particularly accurate. We could do it on two different burns and then it'll be somewhat more accurate. What I won't do is, you know what? Um, yeah, I'm just going to point prograde as I normally would have. And if the node isn't where prograde would be, yeah, let's just kill it. Let's just kill it. I'll do what I would have done. That was a funny sound. Three good engines. See? <laughs> okay, I feel like we've gotten too high up. And I want to go around. Our orbital period is only four hours. Hopefully we'll have communication at the other end. I don't know, I think I used too much on just RCS fuel off to the side. Let me see what it thinks we need. We need uh, 1,352, it says. We do have to actually impact the moon, I have to remember that. Because we're going to fail the flyby mission. Lunar flyby contract is up in 14 hours before we actually reach the moon. If we do, let me be cautious here. Or before we get a flyby, maybe I should check in Mission Control if we can pick up another contract like that, whether they'll offer it to us immediately after we failed. I don't know. Okay, separation. Ooh. Hopefully that gave us a nice kick there. Uh, well, that seems like a crash course to me. But maybe want to correct that into a flyby before crashing into it, I don't know. I mean, the flyby contract, it says within 5,000 kilometers. It doesn't say it has to be greater than zero. Yeah, so it will be all okay for the flyby as well. And we are definitely uh, approaching the moon on the side that would retain communication with Earth. Also important, we have enough fuel to orient ourselves so that we're facing the sun. Um, well, it's consuming charge right now. Well, okay, we've got a time warp issue, it seems. I thought that was only with KSP Interstellar. But it's actually recharging like this. Why? <laughs> Why is it doing that? Okay, uh, I'm gonna go to the tracking station at time warp then, maybe. We've got a lot of probes. <laughs> I need to clean this stuff up. Um, well, it says active, lunar flyby uncrewed. It says deadline 23 hours now. 
They gave us a one day grace period. I don't think that's enough of a grace period. Yeah, it's a three day trip there. Okay, we are past the day there and it goes away. And it says we failed the contract, we lost budget and everything. Now let's take a look. Okay, well, you know, we have some reputation. And yes, Lunar Flyby, it says launch a new vessel. I mean, we should pick it up anyway. Yeah, I, I'm gonna pick it up anyway. We, we can do it. We can do it. Eventually. We do have a signal delay of 1.24 seconds. And how's our charge? We are recharging. We seem to be oriented okay. There's the moon. All right. I wanted to check all that before we start transmitting science, of course. Log radiation and transmit. Magnetic scan. It should cue all the science, right? Oh, wait, I better make sure that I'm not mixing things up with Kerbalism. I almost did there. Kerbalism has that nice science cue and everything. But this seems to work just fine. Let's move Kerbal alarm clock away. Analyze telemetry, we didn't just do. Let's do that. Okay, we got a bunch of science there. No world's first. <laughs> uh, striking, strikingly enough, I mean, you would think flying, I mean, entering Lunar SOI would be a world's first. I seem to recall probes getting credit for that, but no. No, not so much. We're over to Midlands, high over to Midlands right now. Oh, there's lowlands. I wonder if one of the instruments will work for that. No, none of them are. So we'll have to get low over the moon before we get any new science. I'm just doubly verifying that it doesn't consider this a new vessel. No, it does not. Okay, the moon has blotted out the sun. Uh, high over the moon's Oceanus Procellarum. Well, that's special. Oh, wait. It's indecisive about that. Our suicide burn countdown has turned negative. Not that that would have worked anyway, but I don't think I'm going to get too much low over science here. But at least it's going to be over something interesting. Okay, just above. Transmit that. Well, transmit that when you can. The radiation seems to be the big one, though. Lots of science for that. The science queuing is pretty good. Remote tech. I remember having trouble with that, with remote tech before. O older versions. I think that's everything. And all over Oceana Sprasalarum, so it's a good place. Good place to make an impact. And... Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, we completed the Lunar Impactor contract. We got some extra science for that, a boost to our reputation, and just a little bit past the flyby. One kilonewton thruster, folks. Just trust the one kilonewton thruster. It will take you far. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.